Today is a nasty, cold, and gross April day in Minnesota. But you know what they say, April showers brings May flowers and May flowers brings spawning bass, maybe? I don't know. I have missed you, darling. I will rip you soon, hopefully. So I'm not sure how well you can see this, but kind of my makeshift rafters I have up here. Um, in this pile of wood slash rafter, I have two deer heads. And with the Midwest thawing out, like the last couple of weeks and I've been on the road, they've now started to stink. So, buddy Ryan, let's get together soon. Let's mount some deer heads. Cause it's stanky in here. My pride and joy ice house, the Nanook Thermal XL. It's time to put you away. It's time to put all the ice rods away cause spring is in the air. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to another episode. My name is Sam Sobey. Um, if you're brand new to the channel, make sure you subscribe. If you're old to the channel, I apologize for not posting for like 10 days. Uh, I've been kind of on the road doing a bunch of stuff with my good buddies Greg and Joel. And um, yeah, I'll, I'll talk about that later. But either way, today is gonna be kind of an untraditional non-fishing video. I'm just gonna be kind of rolling around, vlogging with you guys, talking about a bunch of fishing things, talking about new goals, talking about kind of my plans for the spring, and talking to you about a bunch of things I learned traveling on the road that I think is gonna not only change this channel a little bit, but change me as a person and kind of how I approach a couple of different trips and adventures coming up here. So yeah, today's gonna to be kind of cool. Might be weird, it's gross out. It's a fun day to ride around, so come on. Let's have a good one. We are headed um, kind of toward the cities in Minnesota. Um, first, I'm gonna stop at my buddy Bart's house. I forgot something. Do you guys ever leave your driveway and then immediately turn right around because you forgot something? That happens to me every day. <laughs> I grabbed a banana and I wrote Hi Bart on it from Sobe. The reason I did that is I'm going to Bart's house right now because all my tackle is like at his house because he was gonna bring it down south. But we had this discussion about like bananas in the boat and stuff like that and if you know anything about fishing, you know it's extremely bad luck to bring bananas in the boat. Um, something's gonna break, you're not gonna catch any fish. I like full heartedly believe this. I will not l allow a banana in the boat. And Bart was talking to me and he's like, oh dude, I'm not superstitious or anything like that. I'll fish with bananas in the boat all day. And if you're not superstitious and you're a fisherman of any kind, are you really a fisherman? That's the mission now. Next stop, Bart Bart's. We have arrived. I'm not really sure if my buddy Bart is home, but I know his garage code, so it doesn't really matter. And his boat is not here. This defeats my plan. Okay, it's raining. I don't know if he's fishing or traveling, but I suppose we'll still leave the banana. How do I do this while holding the camera? That's good, yeah? He'll see that. Tackle check. Banana in Bart's living quarters, check. And you're probably still thinking, how does this have anything to do with how life on the road has changed you? And and I know, we're just, just relax, we'll get there. We'll get there. Oh. Ah! oh, that was close. That was the closest I've ever been. You're getting crushed. Uh, nine to six. Okay, and I was wondering, is are you guys open for people to just kind of come in there and you can give them a quote or, or help them out? Like, I guess, are you doing walk-ins? Yep, absolutely. Uh, you can just walk in and we should be able to help you out. Anyone that's available, uh, we just ask that you wear a mask. Okie dokie. Sounds good. I will, uh, I'll probably see you guys in a little bit. Sounds good. Thanks, bro. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. We're going to Minneapolis. Okay. We have made it to our next destination. I'm going to kind of go in there, talk with the owner, see what he knows, and then, yeah, go from there. 
they didn't have exactly what I need and that's no big deal. Uh, full disclosure, I'm looking to buy a topper for my truck. I'm not trying to be some full on camping truck camper, but I do want to sleep in the back of my truck when I kind of travel and do fishing trips. And that's part of what I've learned from kind of traveling on the road. We'll get into that later. Either way, let's rendezvous back home. We are back. Are we supposed to get any warm weather here? It's your birthday tomorrow? That's awesome. See you, George. So, I am happy to have my tackle back, but I'm sad I didn't get a chance to really use it. Um, I've basically got all my rods and everything that I love tackle wise condensed down into like three bins um, and obviously a stack of rods. And the reason for that is a couple weeks ago, um, I was supposed to fish the Bassmaster Open on the co-angler side down at Smith Lake. And due to like heavy rains and crazy storms, the reservoir came up like 20 plus feet. Um, where we were supposed to have the tournament was completely flooded. Uh, they tried to move to different axes. That was completely flooded. Um, the current was obviously crazy up the river. It's just like, it was kind of a, a dangerous situation mixed with they had no place to hold the tournament. So Bassmaster decided to reschedule it for the fall. No big deal. Um, but then I stayed down there with my good buddy Greg and Joel uh, for like the duration of the next week and then help them get to Douglas Lake where their next Bassmaster Open is. And the cool thing about hanging out with Greg and Joel who are Bassmaster Opens pros is I always learn a ton from them when we're on the road. And not just, not just necessarily fishing, but kind of how they pack, how they travel, and kind of their trials and tribulations of sleeping out of the back of their truck, to truck campers, to Lance campers, to now Greg has an RV. I really appreciate the time I spend with them, even if it's just hanging out for a few days playing cribbage. Uh, it's, it's fun to pick their brain and kind of see what they've done in the past. And this all kind of, I know it seems all over the place, but it kind of relates back today because I was out kind of topper shopping for the back of the truck. And why is my phone blowing up? Mom. From the time I started hanging out with them till now, I've, I think I've learned three things that I want to carry with me. Just being on the road with them, this is what I'd like to change about myself. Uh, I'd like to be more organized because when you're more organized, you can fit in more stuff. You know where everything is. You save time um, and you just you think more clear when you know where everything is. And that can be your camper. That can be your truck. That can be your boat. That can be your tackle box. That can be everything. And I know that sounds like just so lame, like be more organized. But like truly, if if you're more organized, I think that's going to make you a better outdoorsman. Number two. Uh, you don't need too many things to get by. Joel owns a very nice Lance camper that goes on the back of his truck. Those are extremely expensive, but very nice. Um, and right now, Greg owns a giant RV, which is amazing. He travels around with his wife, his kids, um, videographers, co-anglers. He travels around a lot of people now, but they both started from the back of their truck. Talking about their travels over the past couple months, or even travels years ago, it really made me realize that when you're camping out of the back of your truck or you have a camper or you have an RV, you can, you can get up and go. You can go to the next location, drop down right there, sleep the night. You can go find a campground anywhere in the country next to awesome fisheries and boom, you're right there. And the third and last thing I kind of learned from these guys, um, beyond kind of this is what you'd actually need to get by to live on the road and then organization is just being dialed and uh, getting the right gear for travel and for fishing and don't skimp out on certain stuff. Um, they've got everything from uh, the right cords to the right stuff to change tires on anything, the right tools for this, the right tools for that. Um, they've got 
different sensors that go on their tire pressure gauges if they're making long trips to Florida to make sure they have the right amount of air pressure in their tires. Like beyond that stuff, even the fishing stuff they have, they've got a bunch of different options of the right gear that they need and it's good quality gear. And it just, it goes back to kind of the idea of, I feel like they're dialed. And that's something I'd really like to be this year. Even, even if I got to pinch pennies elsewhere to kind of afford different gear, I want quality gear and I only want kind of exactly what I need, if that makes sense. All right, step one in becoming a little bit more organized and dialed. Let me just show you really quick, because I've actually bought quite a few new things this year that I think is going to kind of step my game up. This year, I've been buying bulk spools of Suffix Advance, fluorocarbon and 832 braid. I like Suffix, I trust it, and to kind of cut costs throughout the whole entire year, I feel like it'd be best to go with bulk spools for me because I fish a lot. If you don't fish a lot, that's totally cool, but I decided to buy kind of all in bulk this year, like 20 pound, 17 pound, 14 pound, 12 pound, just kind of all the basics as far as fluorocarbon goes, and then a wide variety of braid. Here's a line I would suggest to every person in the entire world. This is Suffix 832 Advanced Superline. 10 pound braid, 10 pound braid, Suffix 832 10 pound braid, I feel like you can truly do anything with in the entire world. You can cast for bass with it, you can cast for pike, it goes great on spinning rods. It's truly a bread and butter line that I feel like, I feel like you can do anything with this line. That's my suggestion, I'll link that down below. My second bin, here, like I guess a couple nights before the trip I guess not even nights it was like on and off for a couple weeks but really a couple nights before the trip big time I went through and I organized like everything and I have them all organized in these lure lock boxes lure lock is a company that supported the one they make awesome boxes they have tack logic technology inside their boxes you can buy it without too and if you don't know what that is it's this sticky stuff right here I like it it holds all these jerk baits in place it holds a variety of my different tackle kind of so everything's not shifting around paints not chipping I'm not ruining awesome lures and yeah this is this is what I'm pretty proud of right here here's a whole bunch of jerk baits rapala shadow wraps I've got a lot of good gear multiple colors and I have quality boxes this year look at this <laughs> I am so excited about this right here one of my favorite baits of all time is a rapala dt6 uh, the whole DT series, really, whether that be DT6, DT10, and DT stands for dives to. So these dive to six feet right here. But look how I have them all laid out. And with the sticky stuff, that tack logic technology on the bottom of this, they all kind of stay in their unique position, stuck right there. I even keep my reels in these lure lock boxes. And with reels this year, I'm kind of experimenting. So please comment down below if you guys have had different luck with different reels. I've got a variety of stuff from Cast Kings to old Shimano's to Daiwa Tatulas to old Abu Garcia's. Like, I haven't I haven't found one that I'm like want to be completely loyal with or switch everything over to. A lot of these reels are good for different things, but I don't know. Comment down below. I'm I'm open to your suggestions. And maybe this is just cool to me, but if you would know the old Sobi and you saw this much organization and kind of being this dialed, you'd be like, dang, I I'm, I'm impressed with, with my work here. I'm happy about it. All right, box number two. Boom. Look at how dialed this was, and I didn't even get a chance to use it. I got a little monster bass bag. This is what the baits come in now. Um, in there, I've got just my call tags. I've got a bunch of different pliers, um, this little zoom marker, tape. Everything like a co-angler would potentially need out on the water because I'm gonna ha I would have to condense all this down to basically like a backpack's worth when I'm fishing the Bassmaster opens as a co-angler. So before I go, a few things I need from you guys. Um, I need your suggestions. Um, just comment them down below. Different items you think I would really utilize going on kind of either backwoods fishing camping trips anything I would need for my truck camper if I do end up getting a topper here pretty soon, what I should get for a topper, what brands are good, what brands are bad. Yeah, 
thank you guys for kind of listening to this weird vlog. Um, I'll link everything down below. I'll link everything from the Rapplas to the lure lock boxes to the Suffolk line to the brand new Sobe rods, which I haven't even really talked about yet. So yeah, either way, I'm so excited for spring. I'm glad to be back home. Huge shout out to Greg and Joel for kind of putting me up for those two weeks, even though uh, we didn't have the tournament. It was awesome to hang out with those guys and kind of reconnect. And uh, yeah, this, this upcoming spring, as you look to buy tackle and you look to just kind of get ready for open water season, remember the three things that I kind of learned from Greg and Joel. Just uh, organization, being dialed, and only having kind of what you need for your trip. Only packing what you need. And uh, yeah, I think you might be more successful. I'm going to try to implement those ideas and I think I'll be more successful and happy with it too. So thank you guys so much for watching this video all the way to the end. I truly appreciate it. I've got exciting things coming up, I promise. So stay glued and subscribe if you're not. And uh, yeah, I guess there's nothing left to be said than stay tuned. And as always, let the adventure begin. See ya. Move ahead. Oh my pretty babe. Something ain't right Got to find a way To move ahead Oh my pretty